So the media is mad at Ryan James Gerdusky. Why? Because he made a uh, crude comment to Mehdi Hassan because Hassan was calling all Trump supporters Nazis and saying that by having a political rally, you're a Nazi. Well, now we have this from the post millennial. Jamel Hill says white men are the worst thing in America. Maybe them being the worst thing in America for decades has its consequences. Well, uh, they are one of the largest demographics, white people being the largest demographic. This is what you are voting against. This is why Donald Trump needs to win a popular vote victory. This is a contributing writer for The Atlantic. Here we go. Jamel J. Hill. Uh, I, I believe this is her, right? Contributing writer for The Atlantic, host of iHeart Podcast S Politics Politics Pod. And she has the nerve to say something shockingly racist like this. Donald Trump needs to win an overwhelming victory so that we can rebuke the racists in this country like her. They want to play this game by saying, actually, Tim, we've qualified racism as prejudice plus power. Therefore, you're no longer allowed to call people racist. I don't care. I don't care what you say. I don't care about woke definitions. We are sick and tired of people being disparaged on the basis of race. And so when you have far leftists insulting white people all day, every day for just being white, it is annoying. It is sickening. And I'm done with it. Let me read this for you. And then I'm going to rag on these left racists. And it's funny because they're like, we're not racist. You're the racist. I don't care what these people think. They're they're deranged. This ideology, you understand, I understand enough. In a post on Friday, columnist Jamel Hill said that white men are the worst thing in America. Hill posted a graphic which cites Pew Research polling that showed 36 percent of white men in America support Harris in her run for the White House. In comparison, 53 percent of Latino men and 72 percent of black men supported Harris. She says, I can't quite see it. Can anyone guess what the problem is? And she put Q white. Yes, right. As you responded, maybe calling them the worst thing in America for decades has consequences to which he'll wrote. Maybe them being the worst thing in America for decades has its consequences. Do you want to get white men to vote for Kamala Harris? First, don't insult them and call them the worst thing imaginable. But this is just going to drive more people into the hands of Donald Trump. This comes the latest post from the New York Times Siena College found that Harris and the GOP candidate Trump are tied at 48 percent across the country. The campaign has not only had a struggle gaining white male support, but also male support in general. Harris and her surrogates have also been hammering the black male demographic as a crucial in crucial swing states uh, as crucial swing states like Georgia show that the demographic is leaning away from Harris and towards Trump. Barack Obama made a stop at a local campaign office before a rally in Pittsburgh and told a group of black men. We have not yet seen the same kind of energy and turnout in all quarters of our neighborhoods and communities as we saw when I was running. Now, I also want to say that seems to be more pronounced with the brothers. Harris met with Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer at a bar Saturday for a photo op during which a hot mic captured her saying we need to move ground among men. So here is this woman who is a shocking racist. And I despise these, these, these shocking racists. We have this from Fox News. Columnist Jamel Hill rips ex NASCAR star Danica Patrick for Trump vote, takes swipe at white women. It's just white people she doesn't like. That's called being a racist. I don't care what they say. They say, no, nah, no, nah, because because we don't have the power. I don't care what you think. If a group of people hates another group of people based on race and you have positive or negative discrimination based on race, you're a racist. Thank you and have a nice day. But here we go. Now she's attacking uh, Danica Patrick for being a white woman. Former ESPN pundit currently contributing for The Atlantic. Yeah, that's The Atlantic. And we're supposed to assume these people are fair. Patrick revealed an act she had voted for the first time in her life and made her decision to cast her vote for Trump uh, or for, for J.D. Vance, a, a former president, as he and uh, yes, for Trump, as he runs against Kamala Harris. Jamel Hill says, considering what they said about you as a woman driver and what Trump stands for against women, this is unhinged behavior. But good luck, though. Also, this is why a lot of people do not trust white women in this election. Ah, uh, yes, the racists. I, 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 I can't stand it, man. You know, uh, I'll tell you a story. I'm going to tell you a personal story about me. It's funny, right? Uh, most of you know, I grew up in Chicago. In my neighborhood, it was a bunch of different people of different racial backgrounds. We did have this dividing line with 47th Street, where on one side it was all black. On this side, it was mostly white, but largely mixed. And I'm skating with people and there are Asian people and there's immigrants from Europe and there's uh, Latino people and there's black people. And I didn't think nothing of it. 
You know, and I come from a mixed background, of course, most of you know. And a lot of it's funny because conservatives will will joke like Tim Pool saying he's mixed race. I actually don't bring it up a lot at all. It comes up periodically when someone makes a joke about it or I'm trying to make fun of the left. But here's the issue. I thought we were going to have a better system. I thought we would see this stuff start to go away. But I believe it was Larry Elder. It may, may have been or Thomas. So I'm sorry. I can't remember which which uh, individual said this, that that racism is on life support. And it's Democrats that are that are running this. Jamel Hill hates white people. I, because she's a racist. You know, she she when she says they don't trust white women in this election, you have to wonder and about white men as well being the worst thing ever. There is a young homeless white guy right now, and he's asking himself, why do you hate me so much? Daryl Davis, a black blues musician, asked himself the very same question when uh, he went and met with Klan members and de-radicalized them. He said, how can someone hate me if they don't know me? And he had this really great story where he said he, he met this Klan guy, this like high ranking Klan member who was a big rock and roll fan. And uh, they started talking and this guy's racist, racist as they come. And then there's a, some there's some famous hot rod, some famous car. And the guy was talking about how he's just a big fan of this rock and roll guy. And he always wanted to see this car. And this black man who he had this the, the, this clan member had a prejudice against says to him, you want to go see the car? I get you to sit in it. And the guy's like, what are you? Are you kidding me? And he's like, come on, buddy, let's go. I'll get you in that car. And this guy's crying. It's an amazing story. He tells his story. He's like, this guy starts crying because it was his dream to see this car. And, you know, all of this, these preconceived notions he had about race are just gone. It was just a guy and they were friends. He says, he said, Daryl Davis had a lot of these dudes and, and he's gone fairly woke, people say. But he said a lot of these guys turned their robes over to him. Their clan robes. Because they were like, there's, there's a really funny interaction Daryl Davis had with a guy where he's, he's telling him that, you know, he, he, he claimed black people. And this is a clan member saying this, had a gene, according to the clan, that's a... Uh, uh, makes them predisposed to violence, to which Daryl Davis responds, white people have a gene that makes them predisposed to being serial killers. And the guy's like, no, they don't. And he's like, I don't name a black serial killer. <laughs> it's like, and the guy's like, uh, yeah, it's stupid. It's stupid. These people don't want to let it go. They have racism in their hearts. It's what they built all of their personalities off of. And they think that, you know what? Fine. So be it. Play this game. You look at white men refusing to support Kamala Harris, and so you insult them? Thank you. You're now going to drive more people to Donald Trump. You know what I'd prefer? I'd prefer if this was not a talking point of our elections, whether or not someone's race was going to play a role. We had the Cartier family on the Culture War podcast. And I, I say this, I'm like, I don't think it matters that you're black dudes, but clearly to the media, to the establishment, to the narrative, it does. For me, I'm like, I don't care if you're white, black, Latino, you want to comment on things. I'm going to think about who you are. And so here we have this, this, these guys, the Cartier family, Cartier family, they're, they're athletes. They run track. They believe in hard work. They come from, they, they come from good and bad places, but they're good people. They've learned important lessons. They work hard every day and they built up a big YouTube channel. And I said, these are guys that are training every day. They're eating right. They want to be athletes. They know the, the value of hard work. You're not going to convince this guy to vote for Kamala Harris. It has nothing to do with being a white man. And this lady is blaming white men for it. Now, I tell you what, the people who know that with great power comes great responsibility, that as an individual, we have responsibility unto ourselves to be the best that we can be. We, these are people who are not going to be voting for Kamala Harris. They're going to be voting for something more positive and away from these racists, because when Kamala Harris wins, it's the woke far left and racists that gain power. Trump needs to win the popular vote. So I tell all of you, go out, vote no matter where you are, blue state, red state, whatever, swing state, vote. If Donald Trump wins the popular vote, he would be the first they're saying since Reagan to win the popular vote and the Electoral College. Now, that's something, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, we had a lot. Of, it's, it's, you know, people say in the last uh, 16 years, 12 of them are run by Democrats. Well, uh, it's actually crazier than that. All we've had is in the past 30 or 40 years, it's been less than half Republicans. And it's about time we get some political competition in this space. Trump winning the popular vote sends a message to these racists who hate you because of the way you look. Now, look, I'm going to say this. Growing up where I did, we had problems with racists. I don't like them. Yeah, white supremacists. They did not like that they were mixed race kids. But you know what? 
I've not met a Trump supporter who insulted me over it, derided me for it or any issue with it whatsoever. The only problem I ever have with racism comes from these people. If I agree with them, they say, OK, you're mixed race. If I don't agree with them, they say, yeah, well, you're white. That's the game they play. The reason you agree with them or don't is because of your race. And I'm sick of it. And I don't want to live in that world. I'm going to leave it there. Follow me on X and Instagram. Smash the like button. Share the show with everyone. You know, next segment's coming up in a few minutes. Stick around and we'll see you all then.